Can we start off by talking a bit about form? Because I know that you're very interested in, in form and structure and mm -hmm. rules. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you're a big fan of the Ulipo writing movement. Yep. Um, do you sit down and say, I'm going to write in a particular form today, or does the form suggest itself through the poem? Well, I think there's an element of both. I'm certainly very happy and in probably one of my most enjoyable modes, sitting down and just trying out a form. And I think it's one of those, almost like doing a crossword, it's just a really basic pleasure I get out of that sort of thing. So, yeah, I, I think it's almost, at some point I do remember getting the, the, the book of forms, whatever it was called, that had, you know, pretty much listed every traditional form and thinking I'm just going to work through them all from A to Z, not out of any kind of great respect to poetic history, but just because it would be a fun exercise. So there's that side of it. And then sometimes you do have the form suggesting itself, or with the Ulipo, the form is so restrictive that the poem almost seems like it, it could only be one thing, because it's that whole Ulipians are rats escaping from a labyrinth of their own construction. It feels like there's only one exit from the poem when you've set up certain restrictions. And even though obviously everyone would produce different poems, from a personal note, you feel like this wonderful feeling of you're not in charge because there's only a number of ways out. Because it strikes me anyway that one of the poems um, that is uh, the, 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 of yours that I like the most, uh, Sestina for my friends. It's mm. a Sestina, but it doesn't really feel overly Sestina-like, mm. if you see what I mean. Definitely, yeah. I think um, that's, yeah, that's an example of a form that is really asking to be upfront and to be dominating. So there's, there's the challenge of, like, how can I turn what seems like a pretty heavy, difficult form into a chatty hopefully if you don't tell someone they might not even notice and that was a again you're kind of battling the battling the form there which is the good is the fun thing and um yeah I, that's that's something i'm interested in i suppose is if you can hide the form it feels like a, like a success because you have nobody knows but secretly i have to do this and do this and that's what's great about the ulipo as well it's like the um when george perec published uh, La Disparation in France and the reviewers didn't notice that he hadn't used the letter E throughout the book. I mean, that is an amazing um, bit of personal gloat. I wanted to ask you, going on from the notion of the kind of conversation or the, the, the mm. kind of rhythms of conversation in your poems, mm. to talk about those, uh, those wonderful little words and phrases that you know that I love mm. um, in your poems, which uh, are seemingly innocuous, but yet are also when you when you reread uh, like kind of um, like IEDs at the roadside of the poem or something like mm -hmm. that. And they, they really kind of um, uh, they they really make the whole the whole kind of strange, slightly bordering on surreal kind of tone of the poem click. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to ask you where where you feel that comes from and whether you have any uh, any kind of influences in, from other writers, mm -hmm. you know, that that use similar yeah. tactics. The writer I'm inclined to think of here is this poet David Berman, who you maybe know, American guy, who I think just has that... Well, he, he's very interesting because he can be incredibly conversational, like ridiculously so, and seemingly formless in lots of ways. And then he'll kind of pull in some either very specific... Um, kind of nerdish moment or actually go for a kind of transcendent spiritual moment and pull it off in the context of him talking about you know girls in tennis outfits or, or whatever it is and that poem snow which is the beginning of his collection has that amazing kind of takeoff moment where it's a his little or the narrator's little brother asking him questions and they're walking through the snow and he's making up this story as he goes along about um, why the snow angels are on the floor and it's really interesting in fact the making up as you go along thing because it you really feel like as the poem was written he can't have known where the poem was going he's telling this little boy oh the snow angels are there because um, the, far the, the farmer saw some people on his land and he shot them and that's where they ended up and the boy's going what does that mean why were they on his land and there's a great 
build up and then at the end it suddenly moves into a kind of uh, other world I think that's a really great achievement um, future dating is a vision of speed dating in the middle distant future and it's essentially a poem that describes a series of three minute interactions in, in the future speed dating will be on these kind of rotating benches so you won't have to get up they'll just slide along the next person will come in and you give them a rating as they go past and it's essentially a form that allows you without with minimum fuss to kind of describe a series of of people they they come along and they have on a badge that says name favorite thing emotional state and so it's a, essentially a form that allows for i hoped the most kind of dense poem it's possible. also about how we describe ourselves or rather the the really simplistic or overly simplistic ways that we mm. describe mm. ourselves and the ways that those those things actually do reveal a great deal. Yeah. Um, and in other poems, you're, it seems to me you're interested in, um, in in that kind of surface mm. and how how language can be um, can be a kind of uh, a veil which we hide ourselves underneath. Mm. So in the poem "All My Friends Regardless," mm. another poem whose title uses that great little innocuous <laughs> word at the end, which seems just to yes, exactly. bring it out of itself. And in, in this poem. You're you're at a, a kind of garden party and you're introducing all your friends to each other and mm. it's it's very funny but it's also it is about how we kind of um, condense personality into one very simple yeah thing. it's interesting yeah. how um, much meaning a description like that can hold I if I describe you as poetry waller or whatever <laughs> no it's it's possible to really get a, a, a strong and rich idea of someone's character from uh, a couple of words or a job description or something, you know, like um, uh, ass assistant editors step away from the pond is, isn't there. I think even the word assistant editor to me sums up, or not sums up, but captures some complex personality. So it makes me think of um, the Grayson Perry uh, Walthamstow tapestry he did, where he had all the different brands represented by little kind of familiars. And it just kind of brought to light that we all have these really, really complex and subtle um, notions of what different brands represent as a person, as essentially as a personality. In, in like, um, in uh, meetings where they're trying to establish what, where a brand is at, they'll ask uh, if this brand was a party, what would the party be like? <laughs> what would be on the stereo? And and it's people have can answer that very easily they have an incredibly rich idea of what a Nike party would be like that sounds far too delicious is that is that a poem in progress or um I hadn't thought of it as such but yeah it could <laughs> I be think it could be I think it could be I mean you you know you're also interested in uh in in the way that, that poetic language can do a, have a similar effect you mm. know that where one thing can essentially stand for for another and mm. by standing for another um, reveals and conceals something about that other thing. Mm. Um, so you have uh, a very short but brilliant poem in, in the pamphlet called Alchemy. Mm. Am I right in thinking that started as a much longer poem? <laughs> you are right in thinking <laughs> that. In fact, that started as a really quite a long poem. It's a poem that tries to turn lead into gold in a, a literal sense, i.e. the first simile begins with something which is lead and it's compared to something else and compared to something else until finally you've got something which is made of gold. And the initial one was about 15 similes long, and over the years, maybe, yeah, at least four or five years, um, it's slowly reduced, and now I can do it in four <laughs> similes. And this one is called Alchemy. A free diver misjudging his weight belt is an aspirin exhaling in a tall glass is sunlight burning through mist, is a medallion under a muscle vest. <laughs>